afternoon all out for a little ride with a couple of my mates but uh, yeah we're out just for a quick ride so I, I thought while well, I'm out because I've already made this video by the way that's what, as you know from the title I'm going to do a quick review of the ZX9 I've had it almost six months now got it in March just towards the end of August at the moment because I know this video won't be out for a little while unless I put it before others which I may decide to do I'll put my fuel back on, which I haven't. So this is a carburetor bike, of course, so it's got a fuel switch. Oh, I've got to redo my mirror as well. It's one of the good things about this bike. Mirrors are brilliant mirrors. I, I love the look of them as well. But you can see plenty of them. I can't see my elbows, but I've still got plenty of view each side. These are great bikes, these ZX6s. Let's just sure start. Start with ergonomics, shall we? Or shall I wait? I'll wait a sec. <laughs> this is going to be the best review ever, I'm telling you. It's all off the top of my head. I haven't thought about doing this or anything. I just thought about doing it all I was going up was. I was just going to go on this ride, and that would have been just a ride, and that was it. No video. I'm going to catch you when we're on the other road, so there'll be a bit less wind noise and stuff. We're going to turn off just up there somewhere. Yeah, just up there. Lovely sound, that's for sure. And the throttle is awesome, and the throttle response and sound, power, everything awesome. Yeah, I bought this bike in March, only 2400 quid, which I think was a pretty good price. I'd had a lot of work done to it, I'd been off the road for like seven years. Two of those that was um, put back road worthy, that just sat, uh, that weren't. I'd, I don't think anyone had done too much damage to it. I think the woman who owned it years ago did drop it because my um, clip on on the right hand side is bent. Not the bar, the actual clip on part. I need to replace that. Kawasaki currently don't have any in stock, plus they cost like just over 70 quid, so I'm not in no rush to do that. And it's not something I really notice because it is just as I've always known it. It had a lot of work done to it, loads of the nuts and bolts replaced new screen aftermarket screen of course dark um, tint uh, it's got the hugger on it it's one of the owners who've done it up got some new well obviously second hand wheels got them painted new um, bearings on it new brakes new chain and sprocket all that kind of thing so I've got all, all that brand new when I bought it unused I'd only done like less than 200 miles in like seven years so the last MOT in 2013 before I got it and I guess that, that was used a little bit and then just sat around with the carbs and everything were ultrasonically clean and set up and all that sort of thing but the bike itself is a beautiful bike. I'll put a few pictures up as I'm talking so you can have a good look at it. I've done a fair few things to it. I got rid of the H frame. There was um, carbon fibre sticky stuff on the screen and on here. I took that off so that looks a bit of a mess but I'm going to take that off soon. Clean that right up because that's not actually sticky stuff. You can't even feel like all that crap on there what looks like dirt. So I'm going to take that off soon. Sand that all down and paint it. I'm either going to paint that black or possibly gold. I'm not 100% sure yet. But I'm not in a rush to do stuff like that. I took it off the, um, there was carbon stuff on the fuel cap as well. I took it off, but that's so super sticky, leaves so much crap behind. That's still got a bit of cleaning up to do. But I also fitted the plus four ignition advance on this because they're retarded from factory for countries with crap fuels and stuff. So the um, ignition advancer makes the spark on the. Uh, ignition stroke spark <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think more words and yeah just to say this it's, it ignites the fuel earlier <laughs> that's better yeah it ignites the fuel earlier with the plus four ignition advancer so they, this will now run less rich than rich yeah 
rich is too much fuel and lean is not enough <laughs> trying to think on the fly sometimes don't work for me but yeah so that's running less rich than these usually do and these are known to run rich so that's much better but it also gives a little extra torque and power throughout the whole rev range how much i'm not sure but obviously because it's burning more of the air fuel mix that's going to give you naturally more power and torque and the ergonomics on this are all, have always been known to be good some people used to compare it to um, sports tours compared to other sport bikes because it is nothing like a sport tour at all I had a sport tour before this as a um, ER6F and uh, the original bars are pretty high but I changed them for Renfro ultra low bars and even still that com oh, the ultra low bars even that compared to this was a lot different I was a lot a lot more leaned over with this and my arms a lot further down you know but compared to other sport bikes these are known to be very comfortable very good ergonomics and if you're quite tall like me I'm about six foot if you're chilling in slow moving traffic and it's okay too and that you can actually sit full upright and just hold on to the throttle and control it like that and just keep in gear and just chill when your hands on your knees or whatever <laughs> so great for that sort of thing especially if you're a bit taller and if you are a little bit shorter they're not too bad if you're slightly taller than me if you do get dodgy knees you can get um what are they called now it's a foot rest bracket so i can't remember exactly what they're called that um drop and push back the pegs about an inch so it gives you a bit more comfort there I'm not going to bother with them, I thought about it, but they're about 30 quid and that's so I'm, like, I'm not going to bother unless I feel I really need to. And at the moment, I'm totally comfortable on this, even on long rides. I've done a pretty long ride one time, which ended up being about 300 mile round trip and I was totally comfortable the whole day. And it can do things like this. I'm going to go too mad because I don't want to just shoot ahead of Crater. Yeah, I was in 6 gear there as well, around 3000 RPM, so you see even in 6 gear at 3000 RPM Probably around 40-50 miles an hour then I did went looking down at it That's still pick up and go really good and that was not a lot of throttle <laughs> So very fast Stock these are meant to have around 144 brake horsepower 101 newton meters of torque and although they weigh about 200 kilograms stock, they're meant to be good for three seconds, not to six times. And they handle very well as well. They're always super steady. And I've never had problems with front end going light, because I am quite good with a front wheel, I'll admit. <laughs> And I do take my time getting used to bikes, you know, so I will still take it relatively easy on bends, as I say. It's only coming up for six months since I've had the bike. And I've never had um, the rear wheel spin or anything, but I've got good tyres on it as well. I can't remember exactly what they are. Um, Michelin Power Sport. Yeah, I think I just called Power Sports or something. 2 CT or something like that, I think they might be good ones. This one has got um, K and N air filter, it's got a duck of it. Rear end, <laughs> rear can. The original fake titanium, apparently it's fake titanium, and it must be because it's super heavy, because I have got a lot of spare parts for this, and I've got the original exhaust. And that is very heavy. So this bike must have lost a fair bit of weight from that. I think the gearing is totally stopped on this. I wasn't told that had been changed, so I assume that it's totally stopped on this. The fuel economy is pretty good actually, it's not too bad. I actually, um, on that ride where we done um, a 300 mile round trip, at one point we filled up on the way there, or topped back up on the way there I should say. And I reset my trip, which I forgot to do earlier, which is annoying. But yeah, I reset my trip when I uh, filled up on the way out there. 
carried on all the way as when we went to Willingham Woods, that's quite far from where I am, at least 100 miles, but we obviously took the scenic route as well. Let's give it a bit of an acceleration when we get the chance. Put the gear down a bit. See, I only got up to about 8,000 up here, uh, that's just a rocket. Awesome. Yeah, like I say, I've, I've filled up, reset the trip, <laughs> went all the way out there, all the way back, going to obviously scenic route and all that sort of thing, as we do as bikers. And as we're coming back, we stopped one place and uh, I said to one of my mates, I said, how far we got left to go? And he goes, about 20 miles. So I thought, well, I should make that on, on my field, on how many miles I've done. I've done about a hundred and... what would that work out at? Uh, yeah, I must have done about 120 miles on the trip and I knew I should be able to make that if I start um, spitting and sputtering I know I then got reserve to use but on the way back I see a sign quite, quite soon after leaving 40 miles to home oh, yeah 20 miles <laughs> A little bit different to 40 miles, so I was clapping my pants a bit. Not too far into the trip, I had to put it on to reserve. And my tank was basically empty. I couldn't hear anything in the tank when I got home. But I'd managed to get 160 miles out of the tank. And it wasn't all taking it easy at all either. You know, we are going pretty fast a lot of it. So, yeah, I feel that pretty good, even if you're going for it a bit. It's a 19 litre tank. So that is good. This model, I think the models before this might have been different, but from this model on, this is a 2000 E1. They started in 94, like CB models and all this, and then E, and then the F models, the last one before the ZX10, which is the bike in front, came out. That's actually an 05, the one in front. Oh, I've got a big bug splattered in, front, in my face. So that is actually a Gen 1 ZX10 up front. But yeah, this this is I think the first of the model that had the 190 rear tyre. Some people still change them to 180 because they think that just makes a handle better. But if if you throw it about, but these you know these turn nice and quickly. There's the bacon engineer in case. Got to engineer that bacon. But yeah, you can flick these about really quickly and stuff. <laughs> Uh, I told you this isn't going to be the best review ever, it's going to be all over the place. <laughs> That's just a quick user review, you know, so, something for me to do on the way out there. Definitely were, and probably still are, quite an under, underrated bike, these are. Excellent bike still. When I got this one, that was at about, what was it, I think I might be able to remember exactly, 16,336 miles I think was on the clock when I got it. No, it's 19,171. Seven, I think that's it. So I'm almost at 20,000 miles. So I've done a fair few in the past five months. Five and a half months, or five and a bit months, something like that. I can't remember. But yeah, as I was saying, these are really underrated bike. A lot of people skip these even at the time when they're out. I've heard from some of the older riders I know. But they're great bikes. A lot of people would have bought the ZX 12s over them. But the problem with the ZX12 is they're just, they're like 50 kilos heavier. They may have a lot more power, but they've got a lot more weight too, which makes them harder in the bends and stuff. And to be honest, that only gives them a bit extra top end, really. That's the main difference. The 0 to 60 time isn't that much difference for, for it to leave you or anything. You know, I'll stick with a ZX12. And especially with someone with a ZX12 who don't know how to ride it, I'd kick their asses because I can. I can really chuck this about, I can launch it really well and everything from first gear without even the front end going light or anything and just shoot off here. Very easy to ride. Even though people have also said to me, if you can ride these, you can ride anything because Kawasaki is um, meant to be known for being one of the harder bikes to ride, but I don't know whether that's just something 
that he's heard back in his day or whatever, I don't know. Well, the people usually go on the boat when they're talking about bikes. I don't think it really matters when I'm reviewing it as a user, you know, because you don't really need to know exact techn technical specs. I've obviously gone through the stop powers and all that sort of thing, what they're meant to have. There we go, acceleration up to me. I'll so catch them up in no time we're coming into a lower speed section in a sec. I think. No, we're not. Okay. This bike sounds so awesome, it's not too loud. Some end cans will probably be quite a bit louder than this because of it. There's no baffle in it. Kind of quiet, it sounds awesome. Yeah, these are amazing bikes at a really good price. You can get some really good low mileage ones, really looked after for a really nice price. If you can afford to spend a bit more and get like one of the F models, the F2 model, which would have been the last one, which would have been uh, 2003, I think, just before the ZX10s came out in 2004. The Gen 1s were 2004 and 5, that's an 05 up ahead. And uh, yeah, if you can afford to get a low mileage F2 for about probably three grand, three and a half grand, maybe about three and a half grand now, because even the Gen 1s have gone up in price not long ago, you could get a fairly low mileage Gen 1 for around three and a half thousand pounds. Now you're looking at like five thousand pounds, as you know, where everything has gone up since this pandemic and bikes are no exception because that's what I was going to go for I was going to go for the Gen 1 ZX10 but because of the price hikes and that I was just going to see what came up I didn't you know I didn't, didn't know exactly what I was going to end up with but I sold my bike and just as I sold my bike a mate showed me this up for sale on Facebook marketplace I was like, yeah, I like the look, but I'd rather get something a bit newer, fuel injection, and all that sort of thing, really. I had a look at it. Looked nice, you know, um, good price, etc, etc. And then I realised it was just down the road for me, so I was like, well, I've got to go at least have a look at it. So obviously I went to have a look at it, and I was like, if I like it, if it's as good as it seems. He really didn't want to move over, did he? But yeah, if, if it looks as good as it seems, I'll probably buy it. You know, I, I've had the money, like I said, I sold my bike the day before. I actually rode my bike down to look at this bike because I was waiting for it to be picked up because my old bike um, went off to Northern Ireland, actually. Which is a funny thing because I bought it from Scotland and I'm in the east of England. But yeah, these are worth considering if you don't want to spend too much money on a bike. Even if you've got a lot of money, old bikes are worth getting because then you know that they're, they're good, they're working order if you know if they're being looked after and all that sort of thing. You're not gonna have to spend a lot of money on it, but you can spend some money on it if you want to, like modifying it and stuff like I did, getting rid of the H bar or put clear indicator lenses on and all that sort of thing. So yeah, it made it look much better. I've got dark um, headlight protectors on and all that sort of thing. So I'll put some pictures up to get a more recent picture. It probably does need a bit of a clean. I got caught in the rain not long ago and I haven't had a chance to clean it yet. Yeah, anyway, I'm not sure what else I can really say or if I've said enough. Just to let you know a bit about the bike and how it's been for me. I, I, like I say, it's been excellent, great fun. I've had no issues with it. I'm about to do an oil change on it and I'm going to give it some good oil. I'm going to give it the Motol. I think it's the 7100. It's fully synthetic. It's expensive to get. I think the old girl deserves it. It's definitely the best oil you can get for performance bikes in my opinion. And uh, obviously new oil filter. I've got new drain plug and crush washer. I've also bought some liquid moly um, engine um, flush 
because this sat for around seven years I thought it'd be good to do that you know give it a bit of an engine flush as well just to clean it out a bit make sure there's no crap in it and stuff like that although this would have had oil changes and all that before I got it but I think it's best to just do that and when I do the oil change my turn to be when I do the oil change I'm going to put a big magnet on the oil filter as I run it up to temperature just to try and catch any bits of metal in the oil and stuff you know I'll keep it on there until the engine stopped and all that so that'll stay in the oil filter I will do a cool change at some point too because I don't know when it was done just so I know it's done anyway I hope the video turns out okay because that was a bit just off the top of my head that's not the best way to do videos even though that's what, how I always do them when it's something like a review it's sometimes good to sort of structure them a bit and that's just a quick user review so yeah if you don't mind maybe check out some other videos give us a subscribe and stuff like that I'll see you in the next video I might be able to get overtaken in a sec so we'll see too crazy because the others are behind me so I'll leave it at that got a little bit of the sand a little bit of a pull going on I'll see you again soon